So I recently spoke at an online conference for high-level entrepreneurs, and I was asked a series of questions, one of which was, how does Greece rate as a place to live and work compared to where I'm living now? Greece is the easiest foreign passport for me to obtain. I'm going to talk about this idea of countries to go and live, countries to go and do business, countries to go and get a second passport in, and I'm going to give you an answer that you might be surprised by. Hey guys, I'm Andrew Henderson and here at Nomad Capitalist, we help seven and eight figure entrepreneurs legally go where they're treated best, moving offshore, reducing your taxes with foreign tax structures, getting a second passport to protect yourself and taking part in new boom market opportunities. And so this question uh, really intrigued me because here's a guy talking about living, I think in his case, he was in Australia and he was asking about moving to Greece. And he wanted to know from the perspective of what we talk about, lower taxes, more freedom, better lifestyle, lower cost of living, just general value for money, running a business, is that a better place? And so I think that the framework you have to put this in uh, is separating everything for what it's best at, okay? Treating your life, treating your business, treating your international plans kind of like a buffet. You go and you take some of this, you go and you take some of that. You're not loading up on one big meal, you're going and taking only what you want and you get to try a lot of different things. And so, you know, 25 years ago when my family discussed the idea of moving to another country, the discussion was, should we move from the United States to one of these four countries that we identified? And if we moved, we're going to pack up the truck, we're going to sell the house, we're going to clear everything out. We'll take U.S. passports with us, of course. You're not going to become an instant citizen somewhere else. Um, but we're going to move. Okay? Today, you don't have to do that. You don't have to go from point A to point B and basically pick one or the other. You get to pick the parts of both that work for you. And so what this gentleman asked was, he said, it's easy for me to obtain a Greek passport. Now I'm guessing that's because he has some kind of Greek ancestry. I've worked with a couple of Australians who've had Greek ancestry. And generally we can go back and we can prove that ancestry and we can get them a Greek passport. So now in his case, he would be Australian and he'd be Greek to what we would call tier A passports. They're very good for travel. And why I like that diversification is because Australia and the European Union, of which Greece is part, both I can see having some kind of more restrictive policies on their citizens in the future in terms of tax, in terms of how they do business. Perhaps they start to take a page from the US and the OECD playbook. And so you're, you're buying yourself an insurance policy against two already high tax countries. I would take the free passport in Greece if indeed you're getting it through your ancestry, okay? But to that point, I would take that passport I would not allow that to dictate where I'm going to live and work and run my business. And so what, what, what he's doing here is he's combining issues the same way that you would have in 1995, where he's saying, if I get the Greek passport, then I can live and work in Greece. Well, no, you can get the Greek passport and then you can live in Greece. Now, Greece is uh, a high tax country. They do have uh, a, a new lump sum tax program that they're rolling out. And so that may be interesting for certain people, but it's still not cheap. Okay. Uh, and so you don't have to restrict yourself to Greece. Now, as an EU citizen, you could live in any of the EU countries, and a couple of them have tax incentives or, uh, again, lump sum tax programs. You could live in Italy, you could live in Switzerland, you could live in a, a number of different places and take advantage of relatively low tax rates. You're, you're generally not going to live in Europe, pay zero tax outside of a place like Monaco. Um, but you don't even have to live in the European Union because you've got two great passports. Okay? And so think about it this way. Let's say you move to Dubai. You liked the energy, okay? you liked the business friendliness, you liked the zero tax. You're never going to become an Emirati citizen, okay? but you can live there as long as you have a business, as long as you have a real estate investment, you have a job, they'll let you live there. And you can take advantage of this hospitable business climate that they've created there. Okay? And so your passport does not have to match where you live. And so therefore, if I'm Australian and Greek or American and Romanian or British and Armenian or whatever I may be, I'm going to look at where can I go with that passport and get a residence permit, okay? And so generally where you live, if you're running a small business, where you personally spend your time is going to dictate your tax policy. The passport doesn't do that, okay? If you don't live in Australia and you don't live in Greece and you are genu uh, genuinely you know, not a taxpayer there, then they don't really care where else you go. Now, again, I happen to think that could change in some of these Western countries in the next decade where they do start to follow you, but for right now, 
you could be out of Australia, out of Greece, and you could go and live in Dubai. And so it puts a lot more options on the table. And so now what you're saying is, okay, let me look at all my citizenships. What extra passports can I pick up through my ancestry? I'll take those almost all the time for free because if I ever have to, I can get rid of them. I didn't pay anything for them, right? I'm not going to become Iranian if my you know, father was Iranian. I'm probably not going to do that. But I'll generally take most passports that are available to me as long as it's not setting me back, as long as I'm not renouncing my current citizenship potentially. I'll take those passports. The question of where I'm going to live is entirely separate. You can get a residence permit for that. And so if you're going to start a business, many countries will give you a residence permit just for starting a business. Again, you can go to Dubai, you can go to Hong Kong, you can go to all kinds of tax-friendly places. But beyond that, you can also get a residence permit in plenty of places just by depositing some wealth in the bank and then moving your business somewhere else. So Thailand, for example, or Malaysia is an example of this, where you can say, hey, I'm a wealthy person. I'm going to move to your country, but I'm not going to have a business. I'm just going to bring my money here, and then I'll put my business somewhere else. And so what you've turned this into is not just, oh, I can get a passport in Greece. Let me move there. Let me live there. Let me pay taxes there. But now we've separated it to diversify my citizenships, find a place that's business friendly to incorporate, and that may be even different from where I live. You could put all three together. You could do two different steps. And that may work for some people, but genuinely, uh, you know, I would suggest why not make it three different steps? Why not pick best place to incorporate, best place to live for the lifestyle you want, and best place to be a citizen? Now, you could certainly live in different places. You could spend your time between Australia, Greece, and maybe somewhere else. We, we call that the trifecta method. But, you know, basically treating this like a buffet, okay? Uh, and the example that I've started to use is treating it like the flag on the side of a cruise ship. You know, I took a cruise last... It's been a lot of years. But remember, I looked out the window. The, cru the cruise ship was flagged to Liberia. Not a lot of cruise ships are going to Liberia. Probably it's never even been to Liberia. But Liberia created a hospitable way for ships to register themselves in their country. Okay? You don't want to go there. So the fact that your company is incorporated does not mean you're going to go and live there the same way the ship is registered in Liberia, but it's not going to Liberia. It's not carrying Liberians. It's owned by some company somewhere else who just found Liberia as their flag of convenience. And so if you can have citizenships that come to you, great. If you don't have a second citizenship possible, maybe you go and obtain one through naturalization, fast track naturalization, citizenship by investment. We've got plenty of videos on those topics. Uh, but then, you know, where do you want to live? Answer that question just for the purpose of where you want to live. And then where do you want to incorporate? And then you get together and you make sure that they all work holistically. You make sure that your passport doesn't impact where you live. If you've got a US passport, well, then you're out of luck. You're going to have extra planning to do. You can still, you can still move offshore, but it's going to be extra planning because your passport got in the way. Okay? Then you go to the next stage. What is my place of residence? How do they tax me on a worldwide basis? If you find a tax-friendly place, there's lots of them, then you can live there and you incorporate somewhere else where your business is operated on a tax-friendly basis. You make those all work together, and now you get to pick from the buffet rather than saying, well, this is what is kind of sitting around in the attic. Let's just do that. Always decompartmentalize things whenever possible. That's how you go where you're treated best, and that's how you get the best deal. How can Nomad Capitalist help you? Four ways. Number one, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell to make sure you get our new video every day. Number two, get a copy of Nomad Capitalist, the book. You'll learn a lot of my personal experiences over a dozen years of studying this stuff, as well as exactly some of the strategies that you can use to build your Nomad Capitalist plan. Number three, if you're not sure where to start, but you want to come and learn from my team and I, you want to come and mingle with like-minded people. Learn more about our live conference, Nomad Capitalist Live. It's coming up soon. And number four, if you want some help right now because you've got a burning issue, you need something solved, you want to lower your taxes, get a second passport, or build the Nomad Capitalist lifestyle of your dreams, go to nomadcapitalist.com and click on Become a Client.